What's going on, everyone? Happy Friday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, and testing negative for all of the viruses. If you did test positive for any of the viruses, we're going to talk about a ton of them today. Hopefully, you have no long-term issues, no long COVID issues, and a full and speedy recovery. It is time now for the Friday edition of the Pandemic Update for Friday, January 5th. 2024. You may notice something. A big difference changed today. First off, the sound quality is better than yesterday because I'm not masking today. No muffled masking sound. That is because, one, I tested negative yet again today. That's three negative tests. That will not be my final test. I'm going to have to do another test on Sunday because on Tuesday, I'm going to be going to get my next round of Exolar injections, and I actually talked with them yesterday. They called me because I pressed the option on there to say, hey, I've recently been ill when they did the appointment reminder, and you have to take all precautions prior to getting an Exolar injection. And they said, well, keep testing, and then test again on Sunday, and they will call me on Monday to see if I have symptoms and to see that I'm negative for COVID. And... Today, so far, zero symptoms. No more GI issues, no more running to the bathroom, any of that business. And the other good news is my dad is also uh, feeling a lot better today. He's had no symptoms. Whatever he had was probably similar to what I had, but it just cleared a lot quicker. So that's some good news. So I figured, you know what, let's do the pandemic update today without the mask. Got the air purifier behind me. All should be Good. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. This is where we do the daily pandemic update on not just COVID, but we're going to be talking about several different viruses. You're probably seeing whooping cough in front of you. Yes, that's a topic today as well. So if at the end of this video you learn anything, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below. All right, let's get going. We have a ton of things to get through today, including some news and new CDC variant data. First off, New York health officials sound the alarm on whooping cough outbreak in schools. Looks like there's been about 100 cases so far, and we've been seeing this pop up around the United States. There's been several reports on this this week. I actually haven't gotten around to reporting them all. But uh, yes, whooping cough, it is a real deal. I actually saw on local news here in Philadelphia that up in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, that's way up there in Northeast Pennsylvania in the Pocono Mountains, there have been whooping cough cases as well, or they're calling it 100-day cough. I think that's the same thing, isn't it? But hey, it's been happening. I just report the news to you. Uh, take a look at this. I can also report this to you. You know how for the longest time, that M word, you know, mask uh it's it was being bleeped out on tv as if it was some sort of a curse word or something in other words they just wouldn't say it health departments wouldn't say it now because we're in such a big surge of viruses right now it seems like all you see left and right yet again mask recommendations going back up hospitals requiring mask again it's great to see, but it's sad that it took there to be a major surge in order for this to happen. It should have never ended, especially in the health care setting. Now, moving on to this. Christine Aguilera puts the... Um, Christine Aguilera puts the genie back in the bottle, postpones Las Vegas shows due to illness. So, yet again, someone else with illness. And let's talk about yet another virus, switching gears yet again. Philadelphia officials announce more locations of possible measles exposures. Yes, so remember we talked about this long ago, maybe, I want to say three, four weeks ago now. Well, they are now adding more uh, places where there have been potential exposures. It looks like Jefferson Health Building back on December 19th, which we previously knew about that one. Then you come down here to an education, a multicultural education station, daycare on Castor Avenue in Northeast Philadelphia. Yikes, it's, it's, it's getting close. I live in the Northeast section of the city. Uh, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia Emergency Room at 3401. Civic Center Boulevard, St. Christopher's Hospital, that's kind of down in North Philly, and then you come to St. Christopher's Hospital on 
uh, Unit 5 in North Philly. So wait, are these the same? Okay, so St. Christopher's Emergency Department. Then you come up here to the other one. And now you come to Nazareth Hospital. I actually had a relative that used to be, we're going, we're going back 30, 40 years ago, used to be in charge of Nazareth. So yikes, that's not good to see that his hospital um, also had an exposure in the emergency room. So yes, uh, measles, yes. I mean, it's been popping up from time to time around the country. If you remember, summer 2023, I believe there was a measles case up in Maine. So, it is happening. We're seeing these random old-school viruses come back again. Now, moving on to this. We have to take a look at the air quality. And probably for the foreseeable future, next week or two, there's going to be up and down fluctuations in air qualities because there are some big weather makers coming. There's one that's going to be coming in the east tomorrow, not terribly big, and then a huge one rolling early next week, which I assume ahead of that there's going to be some poor air quality values that will show up on these air quality sensors. And look at the Great Lakes right now. Not particularly great air qualities. I mean, you got a weather system, plus it's fireplace season. And we know the West Coast is because of fireplace season right now. Taking a look at this, this is a graphic from Dr. Lucky Tran. And I thought this was a really interesting graphic to show. It's just COVID-19 wastewater levels in the U.S. through January 4th, 2024. Chart shows national trends of SARS-CoV-2 viral activity. In other words, covid levels in the U.S. wastewater. The vertical axis shows wastewater viral activity level, which indicates changes in SARS-CoV-2 virus levels, wastewater compared to baseline levels. And what I want you to take a look at is the current level right here. There's the current level, January 2024. Look where we were back in January 2023. I'm going to zoom this in for you. See? See that baseline up there? Look at that. We are much higher than the peak of January 2023, and we continue to keep rising. What does this remind you of? Well, there's January 2022. What was happening at the start of 2022? Ah, the Omicron BA.1 wave. Yes, and it's continuing to go up. And I keep mentioning, you hear me day to day say recently, sometime around January 10th peak. Let's uh, talk about that for just a moment. Got to remember something here. Schools just went back. The West Coast was late to the ball game. Offices just went back. There's a possibility. There's a wild card at play here that that January 10th peak does not even happen, and it goes maybe to the 20th. That's just a rough guess that it peaks around January 10th, but based on how things are rising right now, who's to say it? It doesn't take longer for the peak to happen. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. I would like for it to peak around the 10th, but you know what? It could end up taking longer. Now let's go on and take a look at some CDC data that shows, hey, things are just really rapidly going up still. So, hey, once again, I mean, it's January 5th right now. Five days to the 10th, and all suddenly it would just stop and start going down. You have to start questioning that at this point because... Like I said, things are not going well at all. Here's the latest wastewater update. Wow. 481 sites are now in the red. Red's the highest category. There's a lot of red on this map. And if I had to place a bet here, if there weren't any gray sites, which gray sites are sites that didn't come in, if they were all reported, we'd be well north of 500 red sites. And look at this. This is not good. Orange sites actually dropped. Now you're saying, wait a second, Mr. Data Report, 60 to 79% COVID. I mean, that's not good that that dropped. Well, no, it's not, because every other category dropped. It dropped for two reasons. One, there's gray sites, and two, because look at this, because of the number of red sites once again. And look at this, Ohio came back this week, and we'll have a full wastewater update on Sunday, but I got to show you this real quickly. I got to show you this now. Almost every site in the state of Ohio is red for wastewater. If you live in Ohio, don't be going to no restaurants. Don't be going to no large gatherings, community meetings, uh, sporting events. Please mask up if you're leaving your house in Ohio. Open up a fresh new N95 mask and put it on if you live in Ohio. 
I mean, literally, almost every wastewater site, 90% of the wastewater sites in your state are red right now. And there's other places like that as well. Uh, New Jersey, you're not far off as well. You do have some orange sites, but again, New Jersey is not far off as well. All right, continuing on, we have to take a look at this. More wastewater. Here is the current COVID-19 wastewater viral activity across the country. What what can I say? This pretty much speaks for itself. But in case you don't know, the darkest blue shade is very high. Yes, very high is in many states. Texas, Pennsylvania, Ohio, as obviously you just saw, and Nevada, Maine, on and on it goes. Then you have very few that are in the low levels at this point. And then you have very few, you have some that are insufficient data, but you have moderate to high to with dominating probably being very high at this point. It's just not good. Walgreens this week is at 27.5% positivity level. Now coming on to this, look at this, influenza epidemic status. It's growing just about everywhere. Let's refresh just to make sure it's up to date. And yeah, influenza, it's growing everywhere. And as you can see for COVID, it's growing everywhere, which this uh, dark growing shade, it's the highest shade. Pennsylvania, it's rapidly growing. Texas, Arizona, Florida is now picking up the pace, likely growing in California now. So yeah, things are really going in the wrong direction. And here you have it. Here's your reason why for COVID. The JN.1 variant is now at 61 point six percent so it has not only crossed fifty percent remember before the previous week it was at the previous week it was i believe what was it forty it was around forty four percent well now they're saying it was at thirty eight percent and you can see here it has rapidly gone up to sixty one point six percent therefore there's a rapid rise in everything let's just keep this going but before we do that i want to show you something here Something I haven't been able to say in a while. Because this is now at 61.6%, there are less variants here with a percentage mark here. You can see it's really starting to clean the board. And something else you don't see right now, at least not yet, could change at any moment's notice, but I'm not hearing any news in the pipeline about a future variant that would eventually displace JN.1. Let's hope we don't have one, but as we all know, at some point in time, something else is going to pop up. All right. Now we move on to this. This is not good. Remember last week hospital admissions were around 29,000? Yeah, now it's almost at 35,000. 34,798. It went up another 20.4%. Hospitalizations in this country are just rapidly going up. Now, not in every county, but these counties that you see the orange in, you're seeing moderate to substantial increases and there's a lot of places right now seeing substantial increases and you're noticing it in the majority of the metropolitan cities in this country where there are big population concentrations all right taking a look at this now philadelphia had 727 ems incidents on thursday i want to take a look at the live look in at the suburbs here's montgomery county you can see right now they have 12 active calls, not as busy as it was earlier. And earlier in the day, Chester County was really busy. And there was actually something interesting on here. I actually saw it say Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Now, for those of you that do not know, just west of Chester County, Pennsylvania, is Lancaster County. Yes, that Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, where Amish country is and the city of Lancaster. Well, believe it or not, and I don't usually show this, but today I'm going to. They actually do have a CAD system in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. I want to show it to you real quickly because the reason why a call for Lancaster County popped up here, let's see if it's still the case. Look at this list here. Yeah, Lancaster County is just really busy. Now, some of these are lagged calls, but look at the recent calls. Uh, there's quite a few calls there. They don't state what the calls are for, what they are just as medical emergency on all of them. But the point is, they had a really high volume of calls, and they actually had to call in for an ambulance unit or medic unit out of Chester County because, hey, they were shorthanded at the moment. That's never a good thing. And it's just a sign of the times of how bad things are right now. Speaking of that, New Jersey. Hospitalizations actually went up a little bit today to 1,000. 
367, 69 out of 70 hospitals reported. Would be nice to have a day where 70 out of 70 report. 40 people on a ventilator today. In the ICU, that's now at 145. And discharges, 248 discharges, but yet the hospitalization still went up. It shows you how high the admission volume is right now. New York State, speaking of high volume, 6,303 new cases today. That's a high number, still likely a big undercount. Remember, we are probably coming close to 2 million cases a day in the United States right now. New York State hospitalizations, they actually did drop some today, 3,320. And yes, I am sounding a little surprised about that. The big test will be what happens next Tuesday in New York State. Do they keep rising or do they drop some? Remember, Tuesday starts a new week. We'll get an update on Monday, which will conclude this week. But on Tuesday, we'll start the new week next week. We'll have to see if they rise again. If they do rise again, it means New York State did not yet peak. So yes, 3,320 hospitalizations in New York State today. Let's take a look at what's happening in California. We got an update there. COVID positivity is 12.3%. And then we see COVID hospital admissions. Mind you, this is in the past couple weeks. It says past weeks, but this is the past couple weeks. They haven't updated in a while. 3,122 admissions. And uh, deaths, it looks like the deaths have actually gone down 1.1%. And look at the influenza charts. Their influenza has really gone up. Speaking of influenza and flu, we want to take a look at the national flu numbers. And yes, we have very high levels in not one, but two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I believe eight states. Well, New York as well. That's not a state. New York City is not a state, but take a look here. They have high levels of flu as well. So, yes, flu is not going so well at this time. And you can see the highest levels are mainly in the south, but again, New York State. And it wouldn't surprise me. They're, I mean, they're actually... There is very high levels in uh, New Jersey, also in Virginia, and also in Colorado. But what I was referring to before was the number of states with the highest shade. The shade that they just introduced for the first time last year, this purple shade. There are eight states, and then with the ninth place being New York City. But hey, New Jersey, don't be surprised if you turn purple next week. Same with Virginia. I mean, it's going to continue to rise in the north. And then you come out here to the west. Oregon is low. And I don't know what the deal is with Oregon. Oregon comes in low for that. Oregon sometimes comes in low for COVID. Is it because you have a lack of data? I mean, we know your wastewater data is not always the best up to date. We can actually go back, take a look at that. How did Oregon fare out with wastewater this week? No. Again, the majority of your wastewater sites are not reporting. So I don't know what your deal is in Oregon, but please... Get your act together and start reporting your virus data to the public. Alrighty, folks, that does it for today's pandemic update. I know it was a bit of a longer update today, but hey, there was a lot of data to get through. Did you learn something today? I sure did. I learned that, you know what? This wave is not slowing down whatsoever. Levels are still rapidly rising. Hopefully it'll slow down soon, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see at this point. We will have another update again tomorrow. If you enjoyed this update, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more stuff like this, subscribe to my channel down below. If you know anyone that needs to see this content, by all means, share it with them. And if you got anything to say, leave a comment down below. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic weekend. See you all again tomorrow. Thanks for watching.